Hello everyone, this is Shed Reyes from uh, CDI 2023. I'm really privileged to be with Dr. Arnold Sedo uh, to talk today about the radial access, our radial artery patency post intervention Arnold, nice to see you today. Hi, good to see you again. I'm glad you could make it. Thanks for being with us. So uh, Arnold, radial access becoming 60 to 70 percent acquired by most practices, including STEMI, as you know. Um, but radial access uh, stenosis or thrombosis is very rare, but can happen. So uh, what are the strategies right now to minimize renal you know, to um, help pre access in the future? Great point. Radial artery occlusion has been reported to be anywhere from 7 to up to 10, 14% of patients uh, undergoing radial access. And so those people who don't want to do radial access, they, they point to that as the major limitation. Um, you know, what's really happened in the past couple of years, if you follow the literature, is that those radial artery occlusion data has really declined. The numbers have declined. And one of the, uh, the rap and beat trials showed that if you keep your TR band inflation time to less than two hours, your chance of having a radial artery occlusion was actually less, was about 1%. And another French trial, a uh, series of trials there, showed that the, if you kept it below two hours, your TR band inflation time is about one and a half, uh, it, the chance of having radial occlusion was about 1%. Mm -hmm. So this is dramatically better than what was previously reported, you know, 7 to 14%. And, um, you know, the danger is that if you leave the TR band inflated for six hours, as they used to do in, in Asia, uh, then the risk of having radial occlusion skyrocketed. Yeah. So how do you keep radial arteries patent? You know, you use anticoagulation, yes, but keeping uh, the duration of inflation of the TR band um, sure. to a minimum is, is the, uh, is the uh, it would, would optimize this. The challenge is if you deflate it too fast, if it's less than uh, 60 minutes, uh, there have been shown signs of hematomas and re-bleeding that then cause people to overinflate the TR band and then cause actually radial artery occlusions from the bleeding. Because so they are overreactive to They're overreacting. To it, then they, they, when the hematoma occurs, they leave the TR band on for hours, yeah. and then it causes a thrombosis. Uh, so, you, you know, ideally, you'd have a system where you can actually uh, minimize the time of TR band inflation while also preventing the re-bleeding. And that's where we uh, helped the, uh, the uh, corporation um, BioLife uh, test the Stat Seal device. This is a potassium ferrate hemostatic patch, which, when applied to uh, a bleeding site, causes a, a seal to form, a Stat Seal that's sterile and uh, and and uh, and from and 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 and, and you know, prothrombotic, and uh, it seals the site so that the, the, the annoying ooze, the radial artery ooze that happens when you deflate the TR band, uh, is relieved. Mm. It, um, and so we tested this in the STAT-1 trial of about 200 patients. We showed that we could uh, successfully deflate the, the TR band at 40 minutes, but there was a little bit of a rebound bleeding with some hematomas. So in the STAT-2 trial, which we published last year in Jack Interventions, uh, in 400 patients, um, you know, um, we showed in, in three sites that we could um, successfully deflate uh, the TR band at 60 minutes. 60? 60. 60 minutes, wow. yeah. And, and what is the rate of uh, RAO or right? Radio RAO occlusion was less than 1% wow. in, 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 both, in both cases, actually. Again, Hematoma? inconsistent consistent with prior studies. Yeah. Hematoma rates were similar between uh, a stat seal with TR band at one hour versus attempting to deflate the TR band at one hour. So we had a match, a match protocol oh, nice. where we actually did TR band deflations at one hour on both sides. And so we published this in Jack Intervention last year, uh, but it was you know, a multi-center study of 400 patients. And what was really, really um, helpful is that you, know, you had successful uh, hemostasis at one hour. You actually had a, a signal and, and, a, and a, a trend towards reducing vascular complications of hematomas, radio artery occlusion, et cetera. And in the stat In the stat seal arm. Mm -hmm. So that's, uh, that was very dramatic and helpful. What was very helpful to us is that later uh, a, a UK trial replicated the results within one year in a 2,500 patient trial, a much larger trial, single center, but they did three different arms. It's that seal uh, plus TR band, TR band alone, uh, Actually, any, any sorry, another any hemostatic device, and then two hours two hours of a of an air bladder uh, bracelet, and they found the same thing we we found on the on the one hour arm. They showed that they could successfully um, uh, could get hemostasis with one hour with the stat seal, but they couldn't do so consistently with the air bladder 
bracelet alone. Yeah, and, and this is uh, consistent in regardless of the size of the visual, the arm. Yes. Small yes. or big. Small maybe, or maybe, big. Yeah. Doesn't matter. And yeah. also regardless of whether it's a PCI or not. Oh yeah, because and you see more anticoagulation. That's right. How about is there any P two Y twelve inhibitor? Not two A two B three inhibitor and received? So one thing we did exclude as between these two trials was that we excluded glycoprotein inhibitors. Yeah. So we excluded okay. just for simplicity. We got rid of patients who are yeah. on glycoprotein inhibitors, Cangrelor, or continued anticoagulation with um, with oral anticoagulants just yeah. to make the trial cleaner. But you can argue this is can expedite patient discharge as well. Exactly, exactly. So if you can deflate the TR band sooner, sooner. then you can get consistent hemostasis. Like you know, we had some patients, even with diagnostics, that sometimes would go on for two hours and three hours. Even though most patients can come off at two hours, um, you, you couldn't always count on it, especially after a PCI. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we've had to have oozes that last for three or four hours and that was very frustrating and inconsistent. Absolutely. Whereas with the stat seal, we could get consistent hemostasis and at one hour. Commercially available? Commercially available, just you know, $25 per case. So it's very exciting. And so we've actually had some, what, what I want to talk about was that you know, we've had a number of sites reach out to us on how to implement this, this yeah. device. And you know, some of them, several of them, including uh, several prominent academic centers, you know, they've tried it out. They have seen a few more hematomas in their implementation. And that's why I wanted to highlight, there's a couple of, uh, tricks to tricks, using it, yeah. which one of which is that you always have to apply the, the peak of the TR band uh, slightly proximal to the insertion site to apply pressure. Uh, we have the rectangular stat seal, which allows for more distribution of pressure there. And then after the, the band is deflated, you have to leave it on for 30 minutes because what would happen in the first trial was that people would start bending their wrist and start lifting things immediately, or they would take the, the nurse would take off the TR band immediately after deflation, and that sort of rebound would allow uh, a hematoma to form. So these are some of the tips for using a stat seal safely and implementing it in your in your lab, having a consistent. Uh, pathway, using it only in your PACU, for example, instead of sending it to the floors where a nurse may, may or may not use it properly. That's These true. are some of the things that can help. And then, again, applying that, that band proximal would be a little helpful. Sounds great. Well, that's very helpful, and I'm, I'm glad it's available commercially. I wasn't aware of it personally, but that's definitely expedite the patient transition and staying in holding room and satisfaction as well. Yeah. Dr. Sato, thank you so much for your insightful uh, talk about uh, right, uh, radial axial occlusion and uh, new technology. And uh, please watch these videos and others on CVI YouTube channel. This is Shadi Reyes from Austin.